Hey YouTube, this is Thinking of Pi. Today I am going to be continuing with the sense hat that I showed you last week. And if you didn't watch last week's video, let me just pick up right where I left off. I've got this graphing application that was built in Python. And it will log the temperature and humidity and plot it to a real-time live updating graph. You can see right here, it's just sitting right next to me. We've got the ambient temperature there just under 40 degrees Celsius. Now I really want to show you how I built this and how it's going to work on the weather balloon project. So let's just quit this here. We'll use that later. But here is the code. Now, you're going to be importing a library called matplotlib. Now, I don't think that's even intended to ever be run on a Raspberry Pi, but it works. It works very well. It's kind of a pain to install, though. First, you need to install a library called numpy. Um, if you try installing matplotlib before you install numpy, you'll get a bunch of errors. I also found that it works best when you um, install numpy first and make sure you upgrade the Python version to 3.7. But upgrade Python, install numpy, install matplotlib, do it all with uh, pip, the pip command in your command terminal and everything should work fine. So we're importing matplotlib.pyplot and matplotlib.animation and matplotlib style. And then we have our stuff from last time where we have the sense hat, the CSV writer, and the date time module right here. So we've got our sense object right here. And then we have several arrays. I'll talk more about those in a minute. But we've got the X, which will be our um, date time. Then we're going to have a temperature and humidity array. And we want to define the style that we're going to use. There's a list of these in the matplotlib documentation. This is just the basic one. It's titled 538. You have to define it as a string. So that's right here. Um, this next line is actually the title on the on the application window when it launches. And this all helps control that. So now I've got some objects here. We've got our get sense data. And we're going to be getting the data here and just putting everything into an array. And then I've got these other placeholders, um, temp2 and humidity2 for logging the temperature and humidity, and then dt for date time now. And then we're going to append that to the array with the temperature and the humidity right here, as well as the date time and all that's all right there. That'll return the sense data. And then we've got our animation function. And we want to make sure we log it to a CSV file. Again, if you didn't watch last week's video on how this works, go check it out. And then we're going to open our CSV file, write a new line, and put the header on there. Now, the tricky part with all of this is that there's no loop. When we call the animation function right here, that, that class in the library actually has its own loop. So you can't put a loop in this program when there's already a loop in the animation function. So the whole thing is just going to loop indefinitely and it's going to update every second. So when we run this, it'll populate the graph. Takes a second here. NumPy and matplotlib uh, have a lot of information to load up. Once it's running, I'm only running at about 20% CPU, so it works pretty well. And there it all is. You can see the the data down here in the shell and it updates once every second.
Now, to get a better idea of how well this works, can't really control the temperature or the humidity here. So I'm gonna go put this in the freezer and you'll see the data on the graph change pretty quickly. So I had the Raspberry Pi still plugged into the wall, had to switch it over to battery power to put it in the freezer. So I've relaunched the application and it's currently in the freezer. Humidity has already gone down drastically and you can see the temperature starting to dip. I'm gonna let this run for maybe 10, 15 minutes or so and we'll revisit the data and I'll point out some other interesting features about the graphing application. All right, so it spent about a total of 10 minutes in the freezer. You can see how the temperature gradually went down, the humidity dropped a bit faster, and now that it's out, you can see the humidity is spiking. That's due to condensation on the sensors. And we can see the temperature slowly starting to go back up as well. With this graph, it makes it pretty, pretty neat here because you don't lose any data. Right here at the beginning is when it turned on and it just keeps adding to it. Matplotlib also has options to save your graph. So I'll probably be doing that as well. But I think the sense hat and this graphing application, the logging functions, I think it's all gonna work very, very well on the balloon. Now let's just go ahead and X out of this because it did make the nice graph for us, but it does also log everything into a CSV file here. There's all of our data over the 10 minutes that it was in the freezer. And of course here with the CSV file, I can send that over to Excel and run my own analysis on it from there too. So this is all going to work very well. Next week, I will be covering the Raspberry Pi camera. I believe I'm going to be using that camera on the balloon. I'm not too sure how well it's going to work yet. I haven't quite figured out how to compress the data, so I might need to use a very large SD card. I'm not sure how that's going to work, but make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the video next week on the Raspberry Pi camera. And I'll talk to you all next week. Thanks.